Hello and welcome to the vlog. It is a beautiful day here at the marina, although apparently snow is forecast for the weekend, which should make things quite interesting. But before we get to that, let me cast your mind back about four weeks to when I just relaunched the boat and the plan was to take it off to its winter mooring. Now, I am very cheap, as my friends and former colleagues will tell you, so I was looking for a mooring that was going to be inexpensive, and I thought I'd found the perfect place over in Warwick. And I'd made contact with the people there, and they'd said, yes, all right, come along and, and put your boat here. And then, about a week before I was due to take it, I got a couple of really funny, very rude emails from them, uh, from one of the people I hadn't dealt with before, and they were just really rude. And I won't go into the long and short of it, but I thought, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be at a place where I'm clearly not welcome. So I decided instead to stay where I am in the marina. Now, the thing was that in order to get the boat from here to the Warwick location, I'd asked a friend of mine who has many years of canal experience to come with me, show me the ropes and give me some tuition. And he'd leapt at the chance because he was looking forward to it. And now, of course, I wasn't going anywhere. So what we did instead was he still came up and we did a two and a half day trip down to Braunston. So I got the benefit of his expertise and he still got the canal boat trip he was looking forward to. So this vlog is the account, such as I filmed, of that trip and I hope you enjoy it. Almost as soon as you leave the marina, you're faced with the cold, dark, dank, dripping terror that is a tunnel. Crick tunnel to be precise and this is what it looks like inside. Yes, you have a light on the bow, which just about picks out the line of the tunnel, but for the most part it's dingy and unpleasant. Still, it was a useful learning experience for me, especially trying not to crash into the sides. We'd set off with only a couple of hours till dark, so once out of the tunnel it was time to moor up for the night. My first proper night on the boat out on the cut. Very exciting. These shots taken the next morning are ropes having held us steady through the night despite my inability to tie a decent knot. No such problem for Peter at the stern. And what a beautiful spot to moor. No one around, a mild roar from the distant M1 traffic, but these were the only neighbours and there was no trouble from them. Essentially we had the canal to ourselves and oh there's my boat! I still can't quite get used to thinking that's my home. Inside, all the home comforts at breakfast time. Tea and toast under the gas grill. Mmm. Welcomed by the crew, too. Any army marches on its stomach, you know. Breakfast done, time to go. So a quick push off from the bank. The key skill here, not to fall in as you do so. And then more cruising past fellow boaters. Here's Peter showing me how it's done. A steady hand on the tiller, keeping us straight down the cut. No more than three miles an hour or so, this is canal time. A slower and frankly lovelier way of living. Very soon, a challenge. The multiple locks of the Watford staircase, seen here from the bottom. Let me introduce you to the scourge of the canals. The sill. The sill is a chunk of concrete that sticks out at the bottom of every lock. Get your back caught on it as you go down and the boat can tip, fill with water and sink. In some cases there have been fatal accidents, hence the clear painted warnings to keep forward of the sill as you go. I very generously put Peter on the heavy duty here while I manned the boat, captain's prerogative I say. With the paddles opened the water rushes out and the boat descends slowly. The trick for the person on board is to chug the engine just enough to keep the boat steady, neither pushed nor pulled by the outgoing or incoming water, depending on which way you're going. Look, there's the sill, now uncovered by the emptied lock. It's an integral part of lock design, so they have to be there, I suppose. Time to move out to the next lock in sequence. Here, speed it up 12 times, else we'd be watching for hours. If I say so myself, that was a beautiful piece of driving for a novice, kudos to me. This for interest is what the lock emptying looks like when looking back, and again speed it up. Onwards past more marinas with their ordered rows of tidy boats, always tick over only past moored craft, it's considered polite not to disturb the occupants or rock them around or even pull their mooring pins out by the force of your wash, yes that does happen. 
We saw sad boats on a previous video, but what about these? Rusty hulls sunken at the side of the canal. Who knows what trade they once plied? Here's a milestone turning off the Leicester arm of the Grand Union and onto the main bit, as I recall. Quite a sharp turn, this. You actually need to watch out for other boats going straight on. And look who's keeping watch from the window of this great little house. Bless him. What a sweetie. So cute. Speaking of which, who's this handsome chap? Oh, it's me taking the controls and putting into practice what Peter taught me. Left a bit, right a bit, don't bang the bank. Though there is certainly enough of it. Miles upon miles of glorious rolling countryside. More boats to gawp at as we go. I always like to pick up tips and ideas from how other people have their boats arranged. Notice, for example, on this one, the rear-mounted whirly washing line and underneath a little Honda generator too. Useful stuff. On top, is that a solar panel? I'll have mine installed in a couple of weeks, just in time for winter. Note also the plants and the logs stored ready for the stove. Look, the sign says Braunston. We must almost be there. The rows of narrowboats lined up give a clue to the popularity of this particular boating destination, which is home every year to a historic boats rally amongst other events. Plenty of marine engineers, electricians and other expertise to be found in the workshops beside the banks. The chap who did my engine, Justin, is based here, as is the bloke who sorted out my inverter. It's like the Silicon Valley of the canal world, where all the big names hang out. We've turned round now to find a mooring spot for the night. About time too. It's getting dark. This is day three of our trip to Braunston. We've now turned round and started heading back. And we are at the Braunston Tunnel, um, just waiting, although it is wide enough for two craft to go through, and we found that out yesterday when we went past someone in the middle, which was quite a scary experience. Um, it's preferable not to, so there are two boats in the tunnel right now crossing paths. We're going to wait for the one to come out this side and then follow on in and hope for the best. Once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more. Truly, it's like entering the bowels of the earth. So, Braunston Tunnel done. Three boats coming through in our direction, of which we were the lead. And then one coming the other way, just at the end. He couldn't wait another couple of minutes. And after that, we were told off for going too slowly by one of the other boats, which we definitely weren't. We were going at a, a slow-ish, but steady and sensible sort of pace, I think, for that kind of tunnel. Anyway, fun and games. No playtime for these workers from the Canal and River Trust, getting ready to dredge the silt and muck from the canal. Or maybe they were just playing on the mini digger. Who knows? I know I would. These are the people my annual licence pays for. Work harder, you blackguards! Meanwhile, for me and Peter, a spot of lunch. The finest meal of kings. A cheese and tomato sandwich. Mmm. Finally, we're home, and speeded up to spare you the pain of my manoeuvring, a gentle thrust back into the welcoming cradle of the marina berth. Thank you for watching. If you're logged into YouTube, do give the video a click on the like button if it pleases you to do so. Cheers, and do tune in again.